Now wait a minute, let's not get carried away here. It's all very well Jesus giving us a new law and high ideals, but what about our heart sickness? What about our moral entropy? If we couldn't keep the law of Moses because of our inherent tendency to lean towards sin, why would we be any better at keeping the law of Christ? And if we naturally veer towards selfishness, how on earth are we going to have any chance of living a life of selflessness where we put God and others first? There's no point giving us a law which is a fuller and higher expression of God's character if we couldn't keep the old ones. Giving a new law to unregenerate hearts is just giving us a new law to break, right? We need the internal healing. And didn't God promise that he would deal with our heart sickness through Jesus? Didn't he promise that internal healing? Didn't he say through the prophets, And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart, and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you, so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. He did. So before Jesus left the earth, he gave this command to his disciples. Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he has promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus was going to leave his followers the long-promised Holy Spirit, which would come and indwell them, giving them a new heart, new desires, new convictions. Using our graphic, it looks something like this, where the red circle represents the Holy Spirit. When a person accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Saviour, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within the believer, giving him the power to keep the moral law. The Holy Spirit now causes him to love good and hate evil. It cures the natural heart sickness that leads to moral entropy. It begins to transform the believer inwardly so that he begins to become like Jesus himself, a process called sanctification. It doesn't happen instantly, indeed it's often a very gradual thing, but Romans 8.26 says that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, The Spirit of the Lord makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, Whatever we do, it is because Christ's love controls us. So a curious thing begins to happen with Christians as they follow Jesus. They start to transform into new people. Their inner desires actually begin to change. It's not just that they know what good and evil is better, but they begin to love good and hate evil. Jacqueline Heasley says, It's one thing not to sin, it's another not to want to. Christians don't just force themselves to stop sinning, although an act of the will is involved. They begin not to want to. Things they used to love, they begin to hate, and things that they used to hate, they now love. Christians, in a sense, turn into brand new men and women. That's why we often use the term born again. We become new creations, and it starts on the inside. Through this process of internal renovation called sanctification, we become more righteous. We develop an appetite for God's word, which gives us knowledge and wisdom. We grow spiritually, our thoughts come out of the gutter and we become clean. We develop a sober understanding of ourselves, our ambitions change. We become content with what God has given us in life. We find new joy, we live in the light that Jesus gives us by the Holy Spirit. With our improved sense of good and evil, we judge our motives and actions better and confess our sins when we go wrong. We use our time more wisely, we cultivate our mind. We do useful work and we keep our body clean and in good health. We become humble. We stop conforming to the pattern of the world and living like everyone else. We stop loving the things the world loves. We let go of anger, resentment and unforgiveness. We stop worrying about life. We stop being lazy. We stop using filthy language and we stop a lifestyle of drunkenness. All this and much, much more comes from the Holy Spirit power living inside those who have put their faith in Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit, we are effectively dead in our sins, with hearts that are calloused, stony and unresponsive to God. But the Holy Spirit indwelling us brings us to life. It makes us tender and responsive to God's leading through our spirits. The Holy Spirit is in fact the key distinctive between the Old and New Covenants because it's the Holy Spirit that gets to the core of our sin problem. It gets to the heart. In my experience, it works like this. God will show you something that needs to change through your conscience or spirit. If you are obedient and act upon that leading and make the change, God will then show you something else. If you act upon that too, God will show you something more. Oswald Chambers wrote, 
Obey God and the thing he shows you and instantly the next thing is opened up. God will never reveal more truth about himself until you have obeyed what you know already. When you take these little steps of obedience, before long you will find yourself looking back and being shocked at how much you have changed, how much you now abhor things that used to be attractive. Your increasing understanding of light helps you understand how dark you used to be. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and he will gradually transform you inwardly into a new person. I wish I could describe it better for you, but you really have to experience it for yourself. The key is just to be obedient to the thing he shows you, no matter how big or how small, how confusing or how sensible the direction seems to be. Just act in faith by following the voice of the Spirit. When you react to the Spirit in this way, you are telling God something very important. You're telling him that you love him and that you want to obey him. You're telling him that he comes first in your life, which means that you're following the law of Christ. Remember the law of Christ is simply to love God and others first, think of yourself last. When you ignore the voice of the Spirit, however, and put yourself first, you're telling God that he comes second to your own selfish desires. And as we know, do what you want is the law of Satan. The law of Satan is an inversion of the law of Christ. So very simply, the law of Satan is selfish, the law of Christ is selfless. Every moral choice you make is a straight one between Jesus' path and Satan's path. Every time you put God or others ahead of yourself out of love, you're following the lead of the Holy Spirit, fulfilling the law of Christ and killing the sinful nature. Every time you put yourself first, you're hardening yourself to the voice of God and giving strength to the sin within you. So at this very moment in your life, there is something that you know you should change. Do it. Make the change. Be ruthless with your sinful nature. Let Christ's influence and power grow inside you. Let him guide your decisions and let him transform you inwardly into the likeness of Jesus himself. Paul says, Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. That is the experience of every true Christian. Outwardly our perishable body still ages and dies, but inwardly the real person is becoming more beautiful and more glorious every day by the process of sanctification by the Spirit. The Bible says that you will recognise those who are living lives controlled by the Spirit because they will produce visible fruit. The internal change will start to naturally work itself out into external actions. The fruits of the Spirit are listed as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Isn't that who we'd all like to become? Isn't that the kind of people we want our society to be filled with? Well then, we need Jesus. Only Jesus' Holy Spirit within people has the power to reverse the moral entropy that will otherwise engulf our souls and eventually our societies. Our natural tendency is towards decay, but the Spirit is the power of God within us who can bring order back into the chaos. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Hopefully we're starting to see just how much better life is under the law of Christ compared to life under the law of Moses. Instead of hundreds of rules that we can never keep, we have a very simple instruction of faith and love. Jesus has taken the heavy burden of the law of Moses off our shoulders and given us a very easy and simple way of living. That's why he says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. His yoke is easy and his burden is light because he took all the old laws off our shoulders onto his own, and now he asks just one thing, love God and one another. And not only that, but he now offers us the Holy Spirit, which gives us the power to enable us to follow his path. Finally, a word of warning for those unwilling to leave the law of Moses behind. Paul famously writes about the new covenant saying, This is a covenant not of written laws, but of the Spirit. The old written covenant ends in death, but under the new covenant, the Spirit gives life. If we insist on holding to the old way, it will not end well for us, and we will become Pharisaic in the process. If you want to live by the Spirit, you must let go of the old written law. Paul goes on to talk about those who refuse to give up the old covenant, saying that their minds have been covered with a veil. He says, But the people's minds were hardened, and to this day, whenever the old covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so that they cannot understand the truth. 
and this veil can be removed only by believing in Jesus Christ. Yes, even today when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. If you are chained to the law of Moses, ask for Jesus to give you his spirit and to remove the veil. Instead, let life in the spirit and love for one another under the law of Christ be our hallmark as Christians.